All right, guys. So in the last lesson, we learned about best practice and naming conventions for an API. So what I want to do is quickly go into all the code that we have and make changes so that we follow best practices. And so if you take a look at our get request, you can see we see send a get request to slash posts. That's perfect. Uh, we don't need to change anything to that. However, the issue is, is our uh, create post functionality. So the path for creating posts, we can see that we send it to a URL of slash create posts. That is not going and following best practice. So what we do, just change this to be slash posts. And that's all we have to do. Uh, and so we'll save this. And um, we'll we'll just double check inside our um, Postman just to make sure we update that as well. So this is going to be to slash posts. And then we'll just test this out to make sure we didn't break anything. And it looks like it's still working just fine. All right, guys. So if we take a look at our code, you can see that for our create post path function, uh, we're not actually doing anything with the data. We're not actually saving the post anywhere. Right now, we just print it out and then send it back to the user. So that's not exactly how a real application would work. And so what I want to do is I want to start saving these posts. I want to start turning this into a real fully functioning application. Now, ideally, we're going to save this uh, within a database because that's how any application works. You want to take a post, you want to save it in a database so that you can persist that data. However, we're not quite ready to handle working with the database. It's a little complex. We're going to get to it in this course. However, I want to keep things simple. So what we're going to do is we're going to save the posts in memory. And how do we do that? Easy. I'm just going to create a variable uh, just globally that's going to store all of our posts. So I'm going to say my underscore posts. And this is just going to be an array. And so this array is going to contain an, uh, a whole bunch of posts objects. Right? And what each post is going to be is going to, it's going to be essentially a dictionary. And the dictionary is going to look kind of like this. So we're going to have a couple properties. So we already know that our post is going to have a title. And then that'll have, you know, whatever, you know, title of post one or whatever. And then we're going to have the content, of course. And I'll just say content of post one. This is just an example post. And then what we'll also do is, like I mentioned before, anytime you save an application, save a uh, piece of information within a database, the database is going to create a unique uh, identifier, an ID. Uh, now, since we're not working with databases, there's no uh, ID. However, it's going to create issues because, uh, you know, if you remember when it, when it comes to working with um, CRUD-based APIs, we need to be able to fetch data and update data based off of the ID of the specific post. So we do need to still have an ID so that we can uniquely reference any single item uh, within this array. So we're going to have another field called ID. And then this is just going to have, you know, be some random integer, you know, one, two, three, four, five. It doesn't matter. It's just got to be unique. That's all that matters. So this is what our post is going to look like. And we're going to just store it in this array. So we're going to have multiple posts. And I'm going to keep this one hard coded in here because every time we change our code and hit save and refresh, guess what? It's going to clear this out because remember, this is just stored in memory. So every time our application restarts, we're going to lose that data. So just to keep things simple, I'm going to hard code another, uh, another entry. So for this post, we'll say the title is uh, favorite foods and the content will be I like pizza. And then we'll just give this an ID of two. All right. And so now that we actually have some place to store our posts, we can actually test out our get post functionality to see if it works. So I'm going to save this. We're going to go back to Postman. So find the one with the get operation where we're retrieving the posts. And then we'll hit send. Let's see. Well, when we hit send, nothing happens, of course, because we actually have to update the code to send that data. So let's go back to our code and let's go to our get posts. So right now we're just sending back this information. So let's update this so that we return my posts. And this should be fairly straightforward. What we can do is we can just keep this property called data and then we can just remove this and just pass along my underscore posts. And so what's going to happen is fast API is great because if I pass in a, an array like this, it'll automatically serialize it. So it's going to convert it into JSON. JSON has something that's also very similar to an array, and it's going to change that into a JSON format so that we can send it over our API. So that's all we have to do. We just have to pass in the array and it's going to send that. So now if we try this, look at that. So we get the data property and within here we have an array. So this is JSON also has a concept of arrays. And then within here, you can see we've got our post one and our post two. So um, that's really as simple as how to work 
with our API, how to actually retrieve posts. In the next video, we're going to update the um, create post path operation so that we can figure out how to add a new post into our My Posts array. All right, guys, so let's update our create post path operation function so that we can uh, retrieve the title and the content uh, from our front end and then create a brand new post and store it within our My Posts array. So how do we do that? Well, we already know that we can retrieve our post by referencing this post variable because this will take our schema, which remember we defined with Pydantic. It's going to do all the validation and it's going to store it within post. And so this is still going to be a, a Pydantic model. However, our, um, our array is going to be an array of dictionaries. So we have to convert that to dictionaries. And we already know that we can convert any Pydantic model to a dictionary by doing dot dict. Uh, and then that'll turn it into a standard Python dictionary. And at that point, uh, it's pretty simple. This is just standard Python at this point. We can just do a my underscore posts dot append. And then we can append post dot dict, just like we did before. We don't, we can remove these print statements. They're just cluttering things up. However, there's one little issue. Like I said, we need to have an ID for every entry. Uh, and normally the database handles that, but since we're not actually working with a real database, we're going to have to do this in software. So what I'm going to do is we're just going to assign it a random integer. Um, not really that reliable, but if we pick a random number between one and you know 10 million, the odds of us hitting the same number twice is almost next to none. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the random package. Uh, so we'll say from random import ran range. And this is what we're going to use to uh, create a random number or a random integer. And so instead of doing this, I'm actually going to remove this for a second. And I spelled append wrong as well. What we're going to do is I'm going to say post underscore dict, which is going to be the um, post pydentic model converted to a dictionary. I'm going to set that equal to post dot dict. Okay, so this is going to be the dictionary. And so now that we have a regular Python dictionary, what we can say is post underscore dict. And then I'm going to reference the ID field that I'm creating. And I'm going to assign that to be a random number. So we're going to give it a range of zero two, and then just pick some really, 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 really large number. So this is going to ensure that pretty much any entry won't, for development purposes is going to be unique. But we'll append that to the array. And then here's the thing when it comes to how a usual API works is that when a front end sends the data to create a new post, after we create the post stored in our database, we should send back the newly created post, including the brand new ID. So let's send that back. So in this case, I'm going to send back post underscore dict because that's going to be the brand new post that we uh, add to the specific in, add to our posts array. So let's try this out. Uh, let's go to our post request that we have. And let's see all of our data. So we've got a couple of things, title, content, rating. I don't really care about the rating, um, but I'll just leave it in there for now. It shouldn't matter. And then we'll just hit send and let's see what happens. And it looks like we got an error. So let's see what happened. All right, it looks like there's an, and, and I already see what happened. I forgot to actually include post underscore dict. We actually have to pass in what we want to append to the array. Let's save that. Try this again. Hopefully no errors. Look at that guys. So it looks like we got back the newly created entry and we can see that it has an ID of whatever that number is. And if we do a get request now to retrieve all of our posts, we should see that newly created entry. So let's take a look. So we've got post one, post two, and then we've got that brand new post. Look at that guys. So we are a little bit less than halfway done with creating our CRUD based application.